Hello to everyone and this is Enrican KU. Our discussion on confined space is divided into four parts. In each part, we will be addressing common questions and providing relevant answers based on standards such as OSHA, Aramco, and NFPA. By doing so, we aim to provide a comprehensive understanding of confined space and its associated hazards, as well as the necessary safety measures to protect workers who may be required to work in such environments. In Part 1 we address the following questions. What is the definition of confined space as per OSHA? Who is considered a confined space competent person? What are the different types of confined spaces? What is a confined space ticket and why is it necessary? In Part 2 we are addressing questions like what are the common confined space hazards and how can they be controlled? What are the specific confined space hazards that need to be considered for entry? What are some best practices for confined space entry and work? Confined spaces can present a variety of hazards that can lead to serious injury or death if proper precautions are not taken. The hazards associated with confined spaces are recognized by both Aramco and OSHA. Lack of oxygen Confined spaces may contain an atmosphere with less than 19.5% oxygen, which can lead to asphyxiation. Aramco requires that before entry, the oxygen level should be tested to ensure it is between 19.5% and 23.5%. OSHA mandates that the oxygen level must be at least 19.5% and should not exceed 23.5% flammable slash explosive atmosphere. A confined space may contain flammable or explosive gases, vapors, or dust, which can ignite or explode, causing fire or explosion. Aramco requires that the flammability level should not exceed 10% of the lower explosive limit, LEL, and the explosive atmosphere should not exceed 25% of the LEL. OSHA mandates that the LEL should not exceed 10% and the upper explosive limit, UEL, should not exceed 25%. Toxic Atmosphere Confined spaces may contain toxic gases, vapors, or fumes, which can cause acute or chronic health effects. Aramco requires that the toxic gas concentration should not exceed 50% of the permissible exposure limit, PEL. OSHA mandates that the toxic gas concentration should not exceed the PEL. Engulfment a confined space may have an engulfment hazard, where workers can be buried or trapped by materials that fill the space. Aramco mandates that any potential for engulfment should be assessed and proper measures taken to prevent it. OSHA also mandates that employers must take measures to prevent engulfment hazards. Entrapment Confined spaces may have equipment, machinery, or materials that can trap or crush workers. Aramco requires that all equipment and machinery should be locked out and tagged out before entry and proper measures should be taken to prevent entrapment. OSHA mandates that employers should ensure that all hazardous energy sources are locked out and tagged out. Hazardous Energy Confined spaces may contain hazardous energy sources that can cause injury or death, such as electrical, mechanical, or hydraulic energy. Aramco mandates that all hazardous energy sources should be locked out and tagged out before entry. OSHA mandates that employers should ensure that all hazardous energy sources are properly controlled and locked out before entry. Following is a brief explanation of each control of confined space, along with their respective OSHA and Aramco requirements. 1. Test air quality. Before any workers enter a confined space, it is crucial to test the air quality to ensure that it is safe to breathe. This involves measuring the levels of oxygen, combustible gases, and toxic gases, and ensuring that they are within safe limits. OSHA requires that the atmosphere in a confined space be tested for oxygen content flammable gases and vapors, and potential toxic air contaminants. Employers must develop and implement procedures for determining if atmospheric hazards are present in the space, and ensure that all testing is conducted by a qualified person. Aramco requires that the atmosphere in a confined space be tested prior to entry, and continuously monitored during work operations. The testing must be done using calibrated and certified equipment, and the results must be recorded in a confined space entry permit. Two. Ventilate. Once the air quality has been tested and any hazards identified, it may be necessary to ventilate the confined space to remove any toxic or combustible gases and ensure that the air is safe to breathe. OSHA requires that ventilation be used to control atmospheric hazards in a confined space. The ventilation system must be designed and maintained to ensure that it is capable of achieving adequate air quality and quantity, and that it does not create additional hazards. Aramco requires that ventilation be used to ensure that the atmosphere in a confined space remains safe for entry. The ventilation system must be tested and maintained to ensure that it is functioning properly, and the results of all testing must be recorded in the confined space entry permit.
Confined spaces are hazardous work areas that require specific precautions and controls to prevent accidents and injuries. OSHA and Aramco provide regulations and guidelines for managing and working in confined spaces, which include implementing controls such as testing air quality, ventilation, isolation or elimination of hazards, lockout slash tagout, and the use of appropriate PPE and equipment. Best practices for confined space entry and work include identifying confined spaces, developing entry permits, training authorized entrance and attendants, preparing the space, monitoring the atmosphere and entrance, following communication and evacuation procedures, and debriefing after entry. By implementing these controls and best practices, workers can safely enter and work in confined spaces. 3. Isolate slash eliminate hazards. To further minimize risks associated with confined space entry, it is important to identify and eliminate any potential hazards, or isolate them so that they do not pose a threat to workers. OSHA requires that all potential hazards in a confined space be identified and eliminated or controlled before workers are allowed to enter. This may involve locking out or tagging out equipment that could release hazardous energy, or removing or covering any exposed electrical wiring or piping. Aramco requires that all hazards be identified and addressed prior to entry. This may involve isolating or eliminating potential hazards, or implementing engineering controls to minimize risks. The results of all hazard assessments and controls must be documented in the confined space entry permit. 5. Use appropriate PPE and equipment. Personal protective equipment, PPE, and specialized equipment may be necessary to protect workers from confined space hazards. OSHA requires employers to provide appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, and other equipment to protect workers from hazards in confined spaces. This includes respiratory protection, protective clothing, hard hats, safety glasses, and other equipment that may be necessary for the specific hazards present in the confined space. Aramco also requires the use of appropriate PPE and equipment, including respiratory protection, fall protection, and protective clothing. They require that PPE and equipment be selected based on the specific hazards present in the confined space and that workers be trained on their proper use. 6. Train workers. OSHA requires that all workers who enter a confined space be trained on the hazards of confined spaces and the procedures for safe entry, work, and rescue. This training must be provided before workers are allowed to enter a confined space and must be repeated as necessary to ensure that workers remain competent and aware of the hazards. Aramco also requires that workers be trained on the hazards of confined spaces and the procedures for safe entry, work, and rescue. They require that this training be provided by a qualified instructor and that workers receive refresher training as necessary. Additionally, Aramco requires that all workers who enter a confined space be certified as confined space entrants, attendants, or supervisors. 03. What are some best practices for confined space entry and work? 1. Identify confined spaces. 2. Develop a confined space entry permit. 3. Train authorized entrants and attendants. 4. Prepare the confined space for entry. 5. Monitor the atmosphere and entrance. 5. Follow established procedures for communication, evacuation, and rescue. 6. Debrief entrants and attendants. In part 4 we will be addressing most asked questions on confined space during the interviews and inspections such as testing equipment, lighting, gas tester, fire extinguishers, rescue kit, tripod, oxygen meter, communication devices, barrier system, tripod winch, retrieval system and other accessories. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can ask more questions related to OHS field or suggest topics for next videos.
One request to all kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel The Inner Can for more exciting videos.